Hello friends, how are you doing today? Hopefully well. I think we're here, I think we're live, I think we're all in Comfy UI, and I feel good about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have been going a little crazy with the masking. Um, uh, and uh, I think I've figured out a really cool way to automatically rotoscope out your character um, and by using control net and ip adapter have very simple uh, access to the context uh, you don't even have to prompt this you can literally uh, upload a video uh, it'll do all of the heavy lifting of masking out the person generating the rgb masks for animate diff or for uh, ip or yeah ip adapters and then we use animate diff and control net to mash it all together. Uh, you can use the depth control net to control how much like the original video it is. Uh, the lower you go on that, the more dreamier and crazier it gets. The higher you go on that, the more direct uh, result you get uh, from the video. Um, if you uh, use line art, uh, we haven't done that yet, but you can add line art to the mix and uh, really get all the facial detail of your original video. Um, but really what we get to do here is make a mask that uh, you decide one one image, or we can do multiple, but for now we're just doing one. One image for the red part, one image for the green part, so one image for the foreground, one image for the background, or the ground and the, and the sky, sort of, and then one image for the person. And then you can also add weighted IP adapters and stuff if you want to add a person and a style and some clothing and stuff like that to each layer. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and do the, the one for each. And as you can see, you get a pretty cool result um, from the input footage. Uh, it is maybe a, a little bit more complicated than the workflows we normally do here. Um, but uh, I'm not too worried about that because uh, we can rebuild this. We're, we'll, do, we'll, we'll run it a few times so you can see how it works. And then... Uh, what I'll do is I'll rebuild it from scratch so you can see how everything works. And then uh, when everything's all said and done, I'll put it up on my Discord tonight. You can go play with it, uh, uh, you know, take it home and, and try and break it. Let me know what's wrong with it. Um, but yeah, so for now, uh, we will, um, I'll just use it a bit and uh, you guys can see what it does. And then uh, after that, we'll break it down and uh, go piece by piece and uh, show you the whole process. And then, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, I'll throw it up on the on the Discord and uh, you guys can grab it and play with it. And then uh, once I think it once it's like really easy to use and everyone's happy, we'll throw it on Banadoko as well. And uh, then everyone can go crazy with it. So yeah, if you're on the Discord, uh, that's give you a couple days of exclusive access to this before we uh, get it all cleaned up and put it on Banadoko. But yeah, uh, let's get into it because this is a crazy fun workflow. Um, I know this is a whole lot of nodes, but eighty. 5% of these nodes are just existing to create masks, comp masks, uh, put stuff in places, change things, change the colors of things. And then all this stuff on the right here, this is, these uh, are just for uh, my own personal use. So I can make uh, grid videos. Um, so you can see, you know, exactly what's going on here. So all this stuff, uh, these two great big node trees, pretty much completely unnecessary. This here is pretty much the guts of the workflow. Um, you, you don't really need this stuff uh, and you don't even need the interpolation if you don't want it. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. So we start off by just uh, loading a, a LCM checkpoint and then loading the animate LCM Laura at like a pretty low uh, amount. Uh, we use the animate LCM resolution, which is 576 by 320 or vice versa. Uh, fix seed. Uh, here's where the controls are for the background mask. Uh, that's where we can decide how high up the red is versus the green. Um, so if you want more, you know, ground or more, more ceiling more whatever, you can adjust those numbers. Uh, what else? Uh, goes into animate diff. Uh, it's just regular animate diff through the T2V beta uh, L animate LCM uh, motion module. Uh, and I'm just using JRU's Shatter uh, Motion Laura, which is available on Civitai. Uh, 
uh, links to most of this stuff is actually in the description of my two streams ago. So I will add them to the description of this one, but, uh, yeah, I don't have the links handy right now. Um, but yeah, I'll put them in the description so you can just go grab them. They'll be in the discord thing too, with the workflow. Uh, and here we have, uh, this is just for me to visualize what the masks look like. Uh, so I can see what red and green and blue look like, but it basically just takes the stuff that it makes here. Uh, this final mask here, and then it uh, splits them by color. So I want the red, and I want the green, and I want the blue. And it adds, it like multiplies that color on top of uh, uh, of the thing so that I can see at a glance, oh, the red one is this one, the green one is this one, the blue one is this one. Uh, otherwise, it would just be three white masks because that's what's coming into the, the Animate Diff or IP Adapters thing. Um but yeah, as you can tell, or not as you can tell, but these masks, they go into uh, apply IP adapters for each one. So we're, we're, we're looking at different parts of the image using the mask and having it apply different contexts to those parts. Uh, yeah, that's the whole crux of the, the system. And then control net, uh, this is where we're getting the depth map and the open pose map. We can add more control nets here if we want. It's just a matter of moving this stuff over and... Uh, and and looping them in um we can add line art we can add uh whatever else we want uh, but yeah for now uh i think it's going okay with depth uh we could try a line art one and see if it makes like a big difference but i don't think it will for right now anyway for this what we're doing now depending on the model you use uh the model is actually the thing that determines the most what it's going to look like uh, i'm using a tune model with this one uh yeah real dream tune edition uh and that's why it looks cartoony. If you use a realism model, you'll get very realistic uh, animation. So this is very dependent on the model. Um, one of the things about diffusing in LCM is that your CFG is like one. You can't go above one or two, really. So uh, as a result, you don't have a lot of control uh, with the prompt and the IP adapters for the image as much as you would have with like a longer run uh on uh, like a regular k sampler but again that's you know anywhere from twice as long to four times as long to run those animations so if you can figure out a happy medium of lcm uh you know control and dreaming uh you can get pretty happy because like you saw well you haven't seen but it, these results generate really fast like uh like we get there in 11 steps plus eight steps for the upscale so it's it's you know not even 20 steps the regular one would be like 25 or 30. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, the stuff up here, we're using robust video matting, uh, that grabs the frames from the input video and, uh, it pulls the subject out from the background. It does an okay job. Uh, after effects is better. If you have access to after effects and you have the time rotoscope out your stuff and, uh, just feed it the feed it the data. But, uh, if you don't, uh, this works too, and it's a lot faster. Um, so for this, the masks really only have to be implied because the control net is actually doing the heavy lifting as far as the outlines are concerned. Um, we're just using the masks to sort of uh, feed context into the uh, model. So yeah, don't worry if the masks aren't great. It's okay, is what I'm trying to say. So we get the mask, we turn it blue with the uh, the same image blend multiply thing that we were doing down there. Uh, here we generate a red mask on the bottom and a green mask on the top, and then we slap them together. Uh, and then we put the blue mask uh, on top of the uh, red and green ones with the uh, um, Yeah, put the blue one on top with the red and green so that everything's together. This is the one that we pull our vinyl from. And then, yeah, we have our masks. Uh, we do our animation. Uh, this will convert it into films. So I'm going to do like an interpolation, make it go, uh, you know, slow mo, uh, nice and smooth. And then this, all this does is just generate this little grid here so that I can visualize in later in this grid here what images I used with each generation. That's all. Uh, it's just a way of saving it for my, uh, my, my brain. Cause then if you look the, it's saving them into an RGB mask folder as one source, two control net open pose, three control net depth, 
four RGB images, five RGB mask, six finals. So if I go sort that folder by date, I can see all my generations uh, and all the parts of them. Uh, and again, everything you make in Comfy, all the image, all the videos you generate in Comfy, if you just drag them back into Comfy, that drops your workflow back in so you can get back to work. So uh, don't fret if you didn't save a workflow or something because it's saved in anything you ever made with it. Uh, and yeah, we're using the efficient K sampler, uh, regular control net. PW pose, depth anything, uh, RGB mask for the IP adapters, and yeah, that's it. So uh, for this, you need IP adapters, control net, uh, animate diff. Uh, you're going to want the T2V beta animate LCM uh, motion model and LoRa. Uh, you're going to want the... Uh, any LCM uh, checkpoint uh, for faster generation. And when you use an LCM checkpoint, uh, make sure your LoRa is set to 0 0.15 to 0 0.4. Uh, anything higher or lower will just introduce extra gross noise. Mine is set to 0.15. So there you go. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, let's run it. Uh, we can change out the images or we can yeah let's uh let's try a different context here let's try a swamp looks pretty swampy and uh thunderstorm hey patches what's up buddy try this crazy thunderstorm see what we get so i'll be dancing in a thunderstormy swamp potentially so now we can watch it do its magic. It should do the control net first, because uh, I think that's what I hooked up first, maybe. Oh, it already did all that work earlier. So yeah, it, it's it's just going for the generation now. But yeah, it goes, does these, then it does uh, these, then it does these, and then it does these, and then it does these. <laughs> So the first run is actually really short. And if you want to do really fast iteration, you can bypass this high res fix node. And that will actually just let you, um, uh, that will let you like uh, load your, um, just do the very first one without the upscale. And that way you can kind of hone in on your, on your, your prompts and your context and all that stuff. Uh, then you can unbypass it. And as long as your seed is fixed, like at the beginning of this one, uh, it will just work. Uh, it'll just upscale when you unbypass it and hit go. Yeah. Not bad. Nice. And then it'll do all this magical stuff over here. Oh, it's done. Nice. And yeah, you can right click on any of the video notes and hit sync preview, and then they'll all be in time with each other. Well, until they fall off anyway. All right, let's build this absolute house of cards.
All right, I'm going to try and pull my chat up on the other monitor here. So I can see. So if you have questions as I'm going, feel free to ask. Uh, don't. Uh, yeah, if I go past something that doesn't make sense, uh, mention it so I can help. All right, uh, let's get my other comfy going. Okay. Where should we start? I think we should start by doing the video robust matting stuff because it's, uh, uh, yeah, all the video stuff. Let's start with that. So let's load a video. For this, we have to use load video upload. This is a VHS nodes. If you need a video helper suite, install the video helper suite. It's pretty great. All right, color blue. So we need to, first things first, uh, we need to set a global resolution for our entire project so that anytime we need the res, we pull it from there. Uh, it makes life tolerable, okay? So for that, I'm gonna use the integer pair node, which is a uh, Serge node, uh, Serge, SDXL, Serge, SDXL. Grab that. And all right. Let's do 320 by 576. So this is our width and height. We'll just remember that by hitting title and saying resolution. Okay. The reason I've done this is because already what I want to do is no matter what video we upload, I want it to uh, resize it and crop it to this res while maintaining aspect. The way we do that is by adding a upscale. This is completely weird, but you add an upscale image node. You right click on it and change the width and height to an input width height. Use the width and height from the global width and height. Let's turn you green. Okay. So now our upscale image cyan, and then we go bloop. All right. We are now upscaling our image. Oh, Langs, Langs, O center. Okay. We are now upscaling our image to the system res and then cropping it. So it will always do it correctly. Every other way of doing this using image uh, scale and then image crop will give you a, a uh, absolute uh, just nightmares. It'll give you nightmares. So do this. Uh, all right. Uh, now we're going to add robust video matting. If you don't have that, it's in the robust video. It's in the video matting suite. Install stuff manager, custom nodes, mat. Mat? Video matting, there it is. Comfy UI video matting. Install that. And this, uh, to see what things generate, we will we'll make a video combine. Make it 24 frames per second. Make it an MP4. Uh, and then set the save output to false. So this is essentially now a preview node. We're just going to use it to preview videos because we're going to map this video and have a look at it. Okay. Here's how we control the length of our animation. Everything's going to come off this frame count. This is our global. We have a global res. This is our global frame count. Okay. We, we control it by using the frame load cap, skip first frames and select every end. So the way this works is I upload a video to the node. The frame load cap is how many frames it's going to load of the video. So I only want to do 32 to test. Skip first frame says it's going to start at frame zero and then do 32 frames. If I wanted to start 240 frames in, 10 seconds in, I would set it to 240. Now that's going to do 32 frames, 10 seconds in. If I want it to be twice as fast, I would select every nth two. If I want it to be three times as fast, I would do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how we control the, the length of our animations. In this case, I'm going to skip the first 240 frames, load 32 frames into our video matting, and let's see what we get. Blue, go. Okay. So this is the perfect resolution for what we need. 
and I can work with this. And the reason that happens is because of this upscale image. If we were to scale it up and then crop it, it would look like crap. It wouldn't work. This is the way to go. Okay, so you do that. Uh, robust video matting, video combined. So this is our, our uh, mask. What else do we need? We need the, the robust video matting actually generates a mask as well. And we can look at that mask by using a mask to image. Uh, which is a MTB node. Uh, MTB nodes are very good. I highly recommend them. There's all kinds of cool stuff in there. MTB. All right. Uh, mask to image. Same thing. We copy and paste this video combined. Control C, Control V. Grab the image out, put it in there. And then we're also going to not save this output. And we're just going to look at it by hitting run. So right click sync preview. So this is giving us the, the person ripped out This is giving us the mask. We don't actually need this, but we're just going to visualize this all the way down the line. So the next thing we need to do is turn this guy blue. So how do we turn him blue? We need an image blank, which is a, uh, uh, sorry. What custom node shows the system resources in the floating toolbar? That is called Christ Tools, C R Y S Tools, Christ Tools. Um, C R Y S. Yeah, Christ Tools. Uh, yeah. And when you enable it, it adds those nice little buttons there. All right. Next thing we need to do is turn this guy blue. So we're going to need an image blank node. This is going to create a blank image. Uh, we need the width and height, but luckily we have the global resolution. So we are going to, again, convert width to input, convert height to input. Width, height. All right. So now we have, it's going to generate an image, the size of this thing, but it's going to be white because it's 255, 255, 255. We want it to be blue. So zero, zero, 255. That's blue. We need to add an image multiply or an image, sorry, a bl image blend. I'll find it. Yeah. Image blend, all one word. This goes into image one. This mask goes into image two. It blends at one and we're going to multiply it. If I recall correctly. Copy and paste our preview node, plug it in, and let's have a look. And he's blue. Okay, now he's blue. So what else do we need? We need the, the, the bottom and the top, the red and the green. So we can actually use uh, this node called the uh, background mask node, and it's the KJ nodes node set. I use it a lot. Uh, custom nodes. AJ, AJ nodes for Comfy UI. All right. Get that. All right. And then, oh, my computer's lagging. Might be too much to have two of these workflows open in two windows. That's unfortunate. Uh, I guess I'll just pull this one up occasionally. Oh, odd. I need it to calm down. Sorry, guys, we're having technical difficulties here. All right, there we go. Oh, it's when they're both open. That's odd. What happens if you're in this tab? All right, cool. I think I broke it. Perfect. All right, let's add the node I was talking about, which is down here, and that's the background mask node. Oop, all right. That is in the KJ nodes uh, suite, as I was showing you. So uh, our frame width, uh, so yeah, it's gonna, okay, let's just start it fresh. I don't need to copy and paste it. Uh, background mask, 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 background mask. Oh, 
Oh, I called it background mask. It's actually shape mask. Yes. Okay. So uh, create shape mask comes with KJ nodes. It's for making shapes. Um, we need a square. Uh, and we need that square to actually, can this work now that it doesn't have? Yeah, that's better. All right, cool. Uh, ooh. I just want to make sure the settings are right. So I don't lead you guys down the wrong hole. Okay. So, uh, our mask here, we're going to, uh, look, let's pull it over here for now. Poor computers just chugging along here. All right. Uh, shape mask. We want a square. Uh, the frames, frame height and frame width, we are going to get from other places. Frame width, frame height, and frames. Okay. Guess where the frame width and frame height come from? That's right. Global resolution. All right, and then frame count. Remember how I told you this is going to be important? That's because we're going to get the frame count here. So it's going to generate a mask the same length of frames. So we never have to think about not having enough frames for our batch. Okay, uh, two, six by two, two, six. We're going to actually change the location X and Y to 128 and 460. The width is 512 and the height is 256. Uh, let's visualize this. So image to mask. Oh, sorry. Image to mask. No, wait, what the? Oh, there it is. Mask to image. Derp. Oh no, I think my comfy's broken. Give me a sec, guys. I'm going to try and refresh. Okay. Feels kind of alive. Feels very slow. All right. Oh, that's better. Now it's working again. Apparently, I can't have this on two windows. Good lord. What's the point of that? All right. Let's have a look at these guys. So we want our mask to image. Oh, they're still broken. Is everything cool? I'm just going to restart comfy. I feel like it's being silly. Yeah, I know my comfy throws an embarrassing amount of errors on startup. I guess they're more of warnings because everything works. Works. Hmm. Ask to image. There we go. Okay, mask. Uh, so we need to do this twice, and we need to look at it twice. So same thing as before. Let's see what it makes. If I'm right, it should make one at the bottom, one at the top. Yeah. Okay. So those are our settings for the mask. Make those green and put them over here with the other settings. All right, you. Cool. So we need to turn this red and we need to turn this uh, green. Uh, what? 
Well, then let's just do the same thing we did here. So uh, instead of uh, like, we don't even need to save these versions. We can actually turn these ones that color by uh, adding an image blend. Multiply one. And what do we plug in? Now that's the second one. And what's the first one? We remember image blank, right? Image blank puts in here. And this one's going to be red. So 255. And same deal here. Just image, image blend. Image goes into two. You go into one, multiply by one, and you will be me. Okay, uh, colors, so let's try that. Oh, yes, what did I forget? Resolution. Okay. That should work. Maybe I have to change something for it to work. No. Oh, yes. The image blend has to go into the video combine or you won't see what you're doing. There we go. <laughs> yeah, kind of pro tip, plug your outputs in. All right, uh, so that's our blue, that's our red, that's our green. We need to smash these together. That's pretty easy to do. We're gonna use a, Image blend. Try to remember how I did this freestyle. Screw it. Let's look at the other one. It was a image blend screen. That's what I thought. So we're going to screen one color into the other by grabbing this output and blending it with this output, which should give us, whoa. It should give us red and green. Okay, so now we need to put you on top. So how do we do that? We want to use a node called uh, blend by mask, image blend by mask. No, sorry. It's mask composite. No, I'll find it. Was this image composite masked? I feel like this is the one. Okay. So uh, I always have to plug these in funny to try to figure out which ones it is, but uh, uh, I think it's. Well, first we'll do this and we'll plug our output in. So we want the mask from this dancer, okay, as the mask. And then I think this is the destination. I think this is the source. And I think the dancer is the destination. No, I got it backwards. So the background is the destination. The dancer is the source. Hey, we did it. We did a mask. How am I panning with your mouse over nodes? Uh, hold down the space bar or middle click. Okay, so we built the masking system. So now you can mask any video to RGB, which you'll need for uh, uh, latent, uh, latent nonsense with IP adapters. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of this, aside from these image blank nodes, which are WAS node suite, your helper suite. Uh, yeah, but a lot of this is still built right into Comfy. So that's handy. That's good. All right. 
So yeah, that's the whole system for doing the IP adapter attention masking. Uh, we will actually pull this stuff out of the mask for that. So we have this. Now we just go uh, color to mask. No. An image color to mask? Or is it color to mask? Ah, there it is. So we take this and we want to do this three times. We're going to grab it all three times. Yeah, this is going to be on the Discord for sure. All right. Also, hello, Kevin. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I used to watch you on television. Uh, color mask. Uh, so we want to pull the red, the green, and the blue. Um, oh, I'd love to. Yeah, I would love to. Super down. Okay, so what I've done here is... Um, uh, color to mask the red, the green, and the blue by getting all the red, all the green, all the blue. So I'm just looking for those colors in that mask that we just made, this mask here. So if I did this right, which, you know, so mask to image. Let's do that two more times. Oop, that's just control C, control V. If anyone wonders why I'm making nodes poof out of thin air, I'm just copying one, control C, and control V, pasting. You can add as many as you like. Uh, saves you time. Okay. Let's have a look at these and see what they do. Same thing here. Video combine, video combine, video combine. So if I'm correct, this should make three different masks that are white. But they show us the three different things in our subject. So this is what we're going to use to tell IP adapter what to look at for each part. The bottom one will be the ground. The top one will be the, the sky or the background. And the third one will be the dancer. Um, to help us visualize this later on, uh, we're just going to add those blue, green, and, and, and red masks to these so that we can see at a glance what they're doing. So uh, we have, so these mask outputs are what we're going to feed into IP adapter. But now we can flavor them a little bit with the um, with uh, this this stuff. So we're going to grab our image blank and image blend. And we're just going to do that three times. So let's drag these up a bit. Loop. Image blank, image blend. And if uh, you want to select multiple nodes and move multiple nodes at once, uh, hold shift while you select the next node. And then when you move them, hold shift. Uh, if you move them, if you don't hold shift when you move them, it'll only grab one of them. It's very annoying. So uh, select both. If you want to select a bunch, hold down control and then make a box of what you want to select. So if I want to select all these, I can grab them all. I can hit shift and move them nice and easy. Um, not a lot of people talk about that, but pretty handy stuff. Uh, stuff kind of in position so we don't lose our minds. And we need one more image blank. Okay. We just, we're just coloring our masks for us, for, for our human vision. And we want our mask to image. Oh, uh, what else do we need? We need the global res. You, if you need to plug a node in, you can just grab it and pull it over, plug them in, put it back later. No big deal. All right. It's nice setting things in one place and never having to set them again. Multiply, multiply, multiply. All right, and then you will come out of the final image instead of the mask. Two, three. Okay. That should make them red, green, blue. Oh, no, they're all red. They're all green and they're all blue. Why? What have I done? I bet what I did was I didn't plug these into these. 
mask to image to image two, mask to image to image two. So image one is our blank, image two is our actual mask. A nope, uh, distilled it wrong. Why are you backwards? Oh, because I clicked the invert button. Don't do that. Hotkeys for nodes. There are hotkeys, but you can't set them unless there's a whole pack for that I'm unaware of. All right, cool. So here's our masks that we're going to need for IP adapter later. Here's the processing for the masks. Okay, that's the nerd stuff for uh, ripping someone out of a foreground and background and creating a, um, you know, a scene for them to exist in. Uh, now that we have all this crap, uh, what else do we need? We need the case sampler, we need control net, we need animate diff, and we need IP adapters. Mm, what order do I want to add those in? Let's do the checkpoint loader first. So efficient loader. It's the efficiency nodes pack. You don't have to use it. I just like it because I can yeah, plug stuff in easily. And we're going to add a efficient K sampler. There you are. All right. This is why I like it. Right here. It's kind of nice. You know what I mean? Let's plug that stuff in and forget about it. Okay. First things first, let's put the K sampler down here somewhere. Checkpoint stuff here. Let's do the load video and settings over here with you. Uh, upscale image. Why don't you stay down here with, yeah. Okay. And then probably about there. Sorry, just trying to visualize this for sanity's sake. Yeah, okay. Won't probably need this much room, but maybe. Possibly. Okay. So the chain is going to go uh, checkpoint loader uh, into um, animate diff, into IP adapter, and then into the case uh, control net, and then into the case sampler. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, animate diff. Just for, for this, we're just going to use... Uh, actually, let me double check what I used in the other one. I used Legacy. Yeah, Legacy Loader in Moot. Okay. So let's go to our Animate Diff. We're just going to use the Legacy Loader because uh, uh, life's too short. We don't need all the funky options of the Evolve sampling for this. So let's do that and... Uh, nice thing about a lot of these nodes is uh, you don't have to remember what nodes you need to plug into them. All you need to do is just drag the noodle off the node and let go. Um, so if I need a context options node, I can just drag the noodle off and let go. And then it'll tell me what, you know, appropriate nodes. It's not always right, um, but in this case it is. I want the looped uniform context options. Uh, I want sample settings as well, animate diff sample settings. Those I'm going to set the noise type to uh, empty. I'm going to use the SD15T2V beta or animate LCM uh, SD15T2V. Yours might be called either one. If you got it dead recently, it's called this. If you got it a couple weeks ago, it's called this. It's the same checkpoint, animate LCM. The beta schedule is LCM bracket or er, angle bracket, angle bracket, square root linear. Okay, looks like this. This one looks cool. I like it. Average looks good too. Uh, do you think? Play with the different modes. It's all good. Uh, I like 16.1.3. 16.1.4 is fine. Uh, I've explained uh, context windows and animate diff a thousand times, but if you'd like to understand them again, an animate diff context window is the 16 frames in which the animate diff motion module was trained on. So it's trained on chunks of 16 frame clips of animations that's how it understands movement over time. What Animate Diff Evolve does is it takes those 16 frame context windows and then it stitches them together one after the other so that you can do long batches of animations. Um, leave the context length at 16 
because that's how long the clips are that are trained. Context stride has uh, something to do like mathematically that I don't really understand. Just leave it at one. The overlap is how much time in between the context windows it tries to fuse the one into the next one. So think of it as like an interpolation over the con over the length of the context window. So three means it's going to try to take three frames and match those with the three frames on the other side of the next context window to try to make the context window transition more smooth. Um, the higher the number, the smoother the transition, the lower the number, the more jittery. Uh, three, four, five is fine. I wouldn't go down to two or one. You can if you want, just makes it really jittery. Uh, and higher just makes it really smooth and uh, kills a lot of the animation. So yeah, uh, 1613, 1614, that's all you really need. Uh, animate diff works on the oh the other thing I want to do is add a motion Laura I'm going to add a uh, motion Laura by pixel pusher uh, called uh, shatter uh, I'll put the link in the description um, it's on um, Civitai it's called shatter motion Laura you just load that with an animate load animate diff Laura thing um, yeah that's right it's a lot of you can uh you go to the animate diff github page there's a whole thing on how it all works and all the math involved uh one thing i forgot to do was add a laura stack um pr laura stack that's a or sorry uh, not comfy roll um laura stacker yeah laura stacker uh i'm gonna set the laura count to one and we're gonna add the animate lcm laura and I'm at it about like 15%, 0.15%. Oh, thanks, Myla. Appreciate that. Laura Sticker, Stacker, Slicker, Stacker. Yeah. Okay. Efficient Loader, Laura Stacker. Okay. This just loads Laura. It loads Laura in a better place than here uh, for this. Uh, so that's all you need to know is use the Laura Stacker. Uh, and we need to select a animate or an LCM Laura. So I'm going to use uh, that tune one I was using before, Real Dream Tune. For our uh, prompt, 4K, uh, our negative prompt will be like NSW nude. Uh, uh, what else did I have in the other one? Watermark text signature blurry bad dream embedding. If you have the uh, bad dream embedding, it's good. Um, you can grab that on Civitai as well. Uh, let's do NSW nude just because we're on uh, YouTube. And our empty latent width and height in our batch size will be determined by our global resolution and our frame count. So this is how we can make sure that everything is controlled by this is you change your empty latent width and height to inputs. Change the batch size to an input. Resolution width, resolution height. And the batch size comes from the frame count of the video. So now you don't even have to think about it. It's just however long your clip is, plus uh, whatever the res is. It'll just do it. Um, boop, 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 boop. The reason we don't need a prompt is because we're using IP adapters to uh, imply the, the the vibes. You can use a prompt if you back IP adapters off, but we can we can look at that later. Okay, so animate diff works through the model, so you just pass the model through it. Model goes in, and then out to the K sampler. Boop. Okay, so animate diff is now in between. Uh, it's on the model chain. So the next thing we need to do is add IP adapters. So we'll do an apply IP adapter. Okay. Uh, pull out from IP adapter, add an IP adapter model loader. For this, we're going to use IP adapter plus SD15. I know I need three IP adapters, so I'm just setting them up. All right. And then we can plug that into all three of them. You can use the loaders one time, so you don't have to waste loaders. Uh, same thing with clip vision. We're going to add a clip vision loader. And we're just going to use the either SD15 or the clip fit. Uh, they're both available when you go to install models, manager, uh, install models, search for clip. 
get yourself uh, the Clip Vision G or the uh, VIT H14. Uh, either one of those will work fine. Uh, and then for IP adapters, you want IP adapters plus SD15. That one's right there, SD15 plus. And grab all this stuff as well. All these ones here. You won't, you might not need it, but it'll help if you want your faces to look good. And if it complains, of course you need it. I just already have them, so I'm not sure if they're required or not. Um, and then Clip Vision, we're going to plug into all three of them. Okay. So next thing we need is a clip, uh, uh, prep image for Clip Vision, prepare image for Clip Vision. Uh, this one, uh, this is what we need to turn our images into something that Clip Vision is comfortable looking at. Uh, by that, I mean Clip Vision looks at it's it's um, uh, Clip Vision's native resolution is two twenty four by two twenty four. So this basically just uh, crops it down to that size, give or take. Do a load image node. We're going to need three of these. And three of these. Okay. The image goes into here. Prepare for clip vision. And then the clip vision goes into our IP adapters. Okay. Easy peasy. I'm just going to move these out a little bit so you can see the connections better. Okay. And then, uh, so IP adapter runs on the model, just like animate diff. So we need to pass that through. So let's do that. Case sampler the model goes through here, through, through and out. Okay. So now our model is going out of here, into here, into these guys, and then into here. E Z P Z. All right. Uh, attention mask. This attention mask is these guys. Well, we don't want the color ones. We want the mask. Uh, the uh, the the masks. Uh, the masks are coming from here. Color to mask. So we want ba 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 into ba ba ba. Okay. So we can just grab these three nodes up here, move them down here for now, so we can visualize this. But this is the mask for red. This is the mask for green, and this is the mask for blue. Okay. Now our masks are running through. So we'll set uh, blue is the, the person. So do I have, let's do this guy. And we'll be, this is the sky. So let's change it to this like background here. And then the ground, let's try, yeah, like that. Okay, so ground, and you could actually make notes. That's what I did. Just make a little note. Because before the mask is loaded, you don't, you know, you don't really know what they are. Um, so this one is ground. This one is uh, background. This one is person subject. Into the case sampler. So one more thing we need to do is add control net so that our, uh, you know, we have even more control over the, the situation. So let's, uh, just, uh, just gonna group these like visually so they kind of make a little bit of sense. I'll end up probably cleaning those groups up later, but for now, this will help visualize. So we have settings, uh, animate diff, uh, IP adapter, a sampler. Uh, so now we need control net. Control net lives on the conditioning. Uh, so, whoops, I just unplugged uh, the positive. Uh, we get that from you. All right, so let's add uh, apply control net advanced. All right. Need the advanced ones because um, so positive goes in, negative goes in. Need the advanced ones because we're using um, 
animate diff. And we also need the control net loader advanced because we're using animate diff. This one will be open pose. And then it'll go through. Okay. We're going to copy and paste this because I also want depth. Change that to depth. And make sure you pass your positive and negative through. So now, oh, look at that. This will always cause a problem if you do this. If you connect your negative to your positive by accident or vice versa, your negative prompt will become your positive prompt and you will probably get what you don't want. Uh, okay, uh, we need to pre-process the frames from this input video into control net. So we're gonna use various control net preprocessors to do so. We want the DW pose estimator and we want the depth anything. And we're going to use those. So we want the frames, but we want the upscaled, the, the, the cleaned up uh, frames, these ones. So let's get those from the upscaler. They go into each preprocessor. So now my preprocessors have um, uh, images going into them. So those images go out into the control net, the apply control net nodes. And then we want to visualize these. So what do we do? That's right. Grab two video combines. Easy peasy. And then we take the image out, go in here, image out, go in here. Now I can see what my control nets are going to do. Uh, we can do our case sampling. Everything's going to be hunky dory. The other thing we need to add is the high res fix script out of the script thing here. We'll set it to 1.5. We're going to set it to eight steps at 0.4 denoise. That should be fine. This is an LCM workflow. So we're changing it to LCM SGM uniform CFG of one. We're going to crank it down to 11 steps. Okay, 11 steps CFG of one LCM SGM uniform sampler. High res fix, uh, one and a half times as big, uh, high res steps eight. So after it's done, it'll do another run, clean it up. Image out goes into a video combine. But this one, we want to save because it's our output. So we'll call it um, RGB mask uh, output and we'll call it uh, final 24th guess. Turn that down a bit, get a higher quality version, and that should be it. If this works first try, I will laugh maniacally. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, no, I think it's still okay. Yeah, it's still fine. Thought I had the wrong output there, but it's all good. Uh, let's add a group. Control net. Group for diffusion. And the output. Okay. Oh, why is my batch offset? That's weird. I must have dragged it. I mean, we can try it. 32 frames. Everything feels plugged in. I think it's working. If I hook this up first try, that's pretty wild. How quickly an hour went by, holy cow.
He's dancing. Oh, I think it's working. It is not possible to render only one frame, but it is possible to render 16 frames. With Animate Diff, you must render at least one context window, or else your animation will come out as gobbledy nonsense. That looks cool. I'm into it. So our uh, control net is at like 100%. So if I back that off, like 25% and to tell it to stop like halfway off. Um, you're good to go. So let's try that. This should be more dreamlike. Now let's, let's color these and name them. Uh, you're going to be green for settings. You're going to be yellow title animate diff. Group. Oh, all right. Relax. You are IP adapters. And you are control net. Hello. Control net. And you are. Purple diffusion. Oh yeah, let's add a film node. And drop that in here. And output 24 FPS film. Alright, and then you two. And be a group too. Title is output. And this group we will call no, that's not working. Uh guess you can be pale blue. Oh, it's just not working at all. All right. Edit group title, and you will be mask assembly. Hey, that's so bad, right? Oh, you guys black. Oh, 
you must have been selected. Blue Utah. Oh. Oh, yeah, see, not so scary. Oh, nice, nice one, Mel. Yeah. Uh, any more testing on layer diffusion lately to see what was wrong? Yeah, yeah, I got layer diffusion working a lot better. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's really, it's actually really easy to do. Uh, the bigger problem was um, Tripo, but that's working now too. So, no problem. So yeah, that is the whole workflow. Um. The rest of the crap that I had in my other workflow was just for generating those, uh, you know, these these sort of masks, uh, depositing and 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 uh, you know nerd stuff to make the uh, these. Uh, I don't. I've done stuff like this on the stream. It's very boring. I don't really want to cover it tonight. Um, but it's essentially just using um, that upscale image process with. Uh, you know, image batches, uh, and, uh, where's my, yeah, image batches and using, uh, image grid by rows and yeah, this con image concatenate stuff, you know, like taking images and making them on the right and on the bottom and stuff like that. Uh, it's very dorky, very boring, um, but yeah, the rest of this stuff will all I think I'll just release this version then because it's even easier. Uh, and then this stuff we can actually move. We can actually move this down. Down here. Yeah. Nice. Okay. This is a pretty nerdy workflow, but we got through it really fast. I was surprised um, that it worked first try. All nodes inside the group are reset of defaults. Yeah, I wish... I wish group nodes were a thing, because this workflow would be a lot easier if it was four nodes. Um, Jovix was just telling me about, um, oh, come on, brain. Some kind of stacking node thing now that works really well. Ah, I've forgotten the name of it already. But it's for, like, folding nodes into other nodes and making uh, simpler nodes out of them. And apparently it doesn't break everything like everything else. But yeah, it should be interesting. All right, let's try a different dance video, maybe. Uh, let's try this one. And we'll do a longer run. Let's do like uh, 140 frames uh, after 96, let's say. And uh, I actually like this background and stuff, but let's see what else I have in the... Oh, let's try the mall. I like the mall. And where's the sky? Well, that might work. We could try the lumps and bumps and we got the control nets turned down. Yeah, let's try this. Yeah, let me actually check the chat. I'll find the name. It's called. Integrated pack. Integrated nodes. You can basically make your own nodes out of other nodes. 
So you can make an in-paint node that's like your whole in-painting workflow. I need to check it out. I will figure this out eventually. Oh, shout out to the dancers uh, whose videos I used tonight. Um, let me drop their socials in the thing. Oh, it only lets me go one at a time. Okay. That's fine. Ah, I can handle that. Oh. Sorry, it broke their uh, it broke their links there. Yeah, check those guys out. Uh, fantastic dancers. I just found grabbed a bunch of their videos for input footage. We can probably clean this up now. I feel like a lot of this can be minimized. Yeah. Hey. Magic. Magic. I totally didn't just type it in the chat or anything. IP adapter. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. That helps a lot there. IP adapter weights and strengths up here. Person, background, ground. 
Yep. Control overimpose depth. Oh yeah, we should try Lionheart too. See if Lionheart adds too much silliness or not. So you just copy your entire control net stack and then just change it out. So we don't want depth anything, we want line art. Yeah. And then same deal, we're pulling the image from this resizer of scalar. Into realistic line art. Realistic line art into control net, into video combine. Change it yellow and change it to line art. And we'll put it at 100% to see what it does. Scooby-dee boop boop doop doop doop. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So when you back the depth off, you can see how it's getting a little ghosty because the depth isn't like really grabbing what's going on. So you can find some happy middle ground between dream and, and like hardcore depth. Um, so let's set that to 0.5 and 0.5, but let's let the line art do the heavy lifting this time and see what it do. See what it do. Uh, we can also uh, do a shorter run. Uh, I didn't need to do 140 frames, but that was pretty fast for 140 frames. And now it's doing the interpolated version. And the nice thing about this workflow is it is literally driven by uploading a single video and three images and hitting the go button. Uh, you decide how long you want the run to be and what frames. Easy, 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 easy. All this other stuff is just so you can visualize what's happening. We don't really need all these video combines. You don't really need to see all this stuff if you if you don't care. Uh, you can you can uh, you can either right click on them all and say hide preview uh, to save yourself some like video RAM, or you can literally delete all these because they don't do anything but just show you anything that has the save output unchecked is just a visualizer for you, um, so you can understand what's happening. If you already understand what's happening in your head and you don't, whoa, looks like I've got a bat, my, my bat masks went inverted again. Yeah, it always does that. So yeah, check that. If your mask looks screwed up, uh, just uh, uncheck invert. Yeah, pretty much nonstop since it came out. Yeah, that'll happen. If you go to your color to mask, just check, make sure it's not inverted. That's all it is was inverted. All right, let's try 32 frames with the line art. This should fix the mask this time around too. I love these uh I love these animations, the uh the open pose animations. They're so fun. Right, I've done depth, then it'll do open, then it'll do line, then it should do these. There we go. There's our red mask back to normal. Right click and sync preview if you want to see everything playing at the same speed. So this should have a lot more, a lot more fine detail, but it should be like a lot more like the input video, so. Yeah, a lot of this is about figuring out exactly what values work for the video you're working on and uh, what you can do with that. Um, another cool thing is you don't need to use these apply IP adapters. You can actually uh, um, you can actually use uh, the encode IP adapter. Okay, this one will let you plug in multiple images. Actually, the other one will too if you use batches. But this one will let you plug in like. I could plug in more than just my face. I could plug in some clothes and some other stuff and then, uh, and then pass it to, uh, a 
apply IP adapter from encoded. And then it works just like the other IP adapter mask. So yeah. You can use that to do multiple uh, multiple images that come up into one context and weight them and all that stuff. Let's see what this does. So yeah, with line art, it's gone like crazy, you know, crazy tight to the input animation, which is great. So let's crank up our depth as well. Everything at a hundred, this should be pretty much like our, our input footage, but with, with, you know, a paint over. So as you can imagine, this is very powerful workflow and it's very easy to use. Uh, let's see how much VRAM it takes. Hitting 12 gigs, hitting 12 gigs. I am streaming. Uh, I believe this was hitting about nine gigs when I wasn't streaming. So yeah, I'd be okay under 12. Uh, let's see when it hits that upscale, though. Ooh, 19 gigs. But that's a VAE decode, I think. Yeah. That's pretty normal. That won't matter. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty on it. Neat. Let's try a different part of the video. Let's just grab a different frame set. So the values here, the weight. This is how much weight the IP adapter has over the prompt. So if you back these off to like 50 uh or like ooh or four um your prompt's gonna have more of an impact so you can you can play with that too so some values to play with are the ip adapter weights the ip adapter weight types play with that too um uh control net weights always always make a huge difference the strength is how much the control net has like global strength over what's happening but the start and end percent is at what point down the step count does control net start happening and stop happening. So my start percent is at zero, but my end percent is at 0.5. It's going to get 50% of the way through the, the render, and then it's going to stop looking at control net and just let the dream happen. So adjusting the start and end percent is a way of adjusting control net strength that is not the same as adjusting the global strength. It's actually adjusting when and where the control net locks on. So if you start it late and end it early, um, you get more dream. Uh, you know, if you start it at the beginning and end it at the end, it's control net all the way like it's doing right now. Yes, this, this, this workflow will be on the Discord tonight. I'm just going to clean it up. Efficient loader, lower stacker. Yeah, I think. I think that's all the things. Um, I think we covered everything. You can keep adding and subtracting control nets by just grabbing that stack, copying it and pasting it, moving everything over. But yeah, the... Actually, I think the 12 gigs of VRAM might be because I'm using three control nets, but we'll see. I'll keep yawning. I'm sorry, everybody. Enough coffee for the stream, apparently. Very cool. So yeah, I will post this tonight on the Discord, and then I will post it on Banadoko very soon. Um, uh, as soon as you know, you guys are tested it a bit on the Discord, and it, it ironed out all the all the gotchas. 
Um, but yeah, uh, check the discord tonight. I will, uh, put it in the resources channel and I will message it in the general channel. If you need to join my discord, that is pers.xyz, uh, go there. The link is on there. Uh, hit up the Patreon if you want to help support what we do here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just join the discord and hang out with everybody. Uh, if you make stuff with this tag me, I want to see it. Uh, don't feel bad about tagging me and stuff that you make. Uh, I want to see it. So send it to me. Um, or tag me when you post it. I'll probably repost it if I'm around and I'm, I'm around to do it. Um, but yeah, um, thanks everybody for hanging out and I hope you, uh, learned something. And if not, uh, I hope you can use the workflow and it'll be fine. Um, yeah. And I, as always, if you have questions about this stuff, hit up the discord and, uh, you know, there's people there, they're willing to help you. So, uh, thank you everyone and have a great night. I'm going to end it here. Um, uh, Try different models, try different checkpoints, try different, uh, uh, animate diff motion Laura's try, uh, even try the version three, uh, try different settings, try stuff. Let me know what works. Let me know what doesn't work. Uh, have fun and thanks everybody. Uh, yeah. So you hit up the discord tonight for this workflow and hit up Anadoko in about a couple days for this workflow. If you don't want to go on my discord, <laughs> it's all good. Have a good night, everybody. And we'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.